This video demonstrates problems using the central limit theorem. Our first problem, we're given a mean standard deviation and we're trying to find the probability that a single teacher had an income of at least $50,000. Here's the information we have from 1A. We know the mean is 58,200. The standard deviation is 6,750. And we're trying to find the probability um, that the income of a single teacher is at least 50,000. So I suggest drawing a bell curve here to represent the normal probability density function. And you can label it with the mean right in the middle. One standard deviation, that's about 7,000 or so. So that would get us to about 51,000 here. Our 50,000 is gonna be just beyond one standard deviation away from the center. And since we're trying to find the probability of at least 50,000, we're interested in this area on our probability density function. So remember, the entire area here is one. So looking at that really quick, a good estimate might be, I don't know, somewhere around 80%. So 0.8 might be our probability. To find out exactly, we need to use the Z formula to find a Z score. So we can find a Z score by taking our value of interest, subtracting the mean, and dividing by the standard deviation. So in this case, 50,000 divided by 58,200 all over our standard deviation. Plugging that into the calculator, we get a value of negative 1.21 approximately. Now we have to be careful using our our chart here because our chart is set up actually the opposite way. If you compare these two, this is showing the area to the right of that line right there. Our chart is set up by showing the area to the left of the line. So when we look up this negative 1.21 on our chart, it's actually going to give us this area. But we can fix that by just subtracting from 1. So our negative Z chart is here. Again, it's gonna give us that area, negative 1.21. So here's negative 1.2, negative 1.20. Negative 1.21 is 1131. So this area here is 0 0.1131. All we do is take one and subtract that area we found from it, and that will give us the probability that we're looking for. turns out 0.8869. Um, part B is a little bit different, and only a little bit different. In Part B, we're looking at a random sample of 100 teachers. So instead of using this standard deviation here, we actually have to modify our standard deviation to represent a sample mean. So how does the sample mean distributed? So we do the problem the same way, except for our Z formula, we're going to use this. Where S represents our sample standard deviation. So our sample standard deviation is sigma over the square root of N. So in this case, we have 6,750 over the square root of 100. So that equals, that's just 10, so 675. Plugging this into our formula, our new z-score is negative 12.15. 
Notice this z-score is a lot more extreme than our previous z-score. Well, let's look at, let's look at our, our probability density function, our bell curve, to see why this z-score is so extreme. Our mean is still at 58,200, but our standard deviation is now 675. It's one-tenth the previous standard deviation. So by the time we get two standard deviations away, we're at about, about here would be two standard deviations away, and we're at 57,000. To get down to 50,000, we would be way out here in the tail. Let's say maybe over here, but I bet it's further away than that. So what's the probability that uh, the sample mean of 100 teachers is at least 50,000? In this problem, it's about one, which means we're basically positive our sample mean will have a mean income of at least 50,000. When you try to look up that z-score of negative 12.15, the table's gonna max out on you. It says anything lower than a 3.5 has almost no probability assigned to it, meaning the probability down here on the left side is essentially zero. So uh, for 1b, our answer can be approximately 1.